cannabis stocks, and CEO interviews brought to you by Rich TV Live. Hi, how's everyone doing today? This is Rich here on behalf of Rich TV Live, and I'm here with a very special guest. It's Kiran Sidhu, the CEO of Halo Labs. How are you doing today, Kiran? I'm doing well. How are you, Rich? I'm doing great, and I know you got some big news that's been circulating, and I wanted to go through it. I uh, saw the stock was halted today, and uh, the news is Halo signs bulk extract supply agreement with Aliva. Correct. So why don't we talk about the news today? Well, yep. So we have been working a little bit with Kaliva and we both decided to memorialize it in a formal agreement. So we signed an agreement and, uh, you know, we, we've been supplying them with some live resin in bulk format, I believe, as well as in uh, white label format where they give us packaging. And, uh, and hopefully they were happy with the results and they said, let's enter into a contract. Um, you know, and that's what we did. And to, you know, for us, it's a very prestigious deal because in California, there's no bigger or better player than Kaliva. Um, you know, they're the most reputable um, shop. I think they're one of the largest, they have one of the largest dispensaries um, in the state. Wow. That's impressive. Now I heard that they're working with Jay-Z. Is that true? Yep. Um, yeah. And I think his, him and his whole team, I, I, I forgot, I think it's called Rock Nation or what have you. They're very active with them, um, trying to, you know, help them with different formats, different products. And when I was there last time with my uh, chief strategy officer, Katie Field, and we were sitting with Steve Allen, the president, um, he told us next door they were working on some stuff right then and there. And I think you'll expect to see some exciting stuff from Kaliva in terms of new formats and new products that they're coming out with as a result of that uh, relationship. Wow. So what exactly are you going to be doing for Kaliva? Um, well, what we hope to be doing is supplying them with their bulk distillate, which we make in Cathedral City. You know, we're making somewhere between 80 to 100 liters a week of uh, bulk uh, A grade, 85 percent uh, distillate. Then uh, on top of that, we have an active live resin business. I mean, we have really highly specialized equipment and these Huber chillers that get down to negative 90 and uh, we make really good live resin and that's from the plant being completely frozen and we put it frozen, it remains frozen and goes into, the, goes into our columns and then out comes like a caviar-like substance. It's the creme de la creme of uh, the marijuana industry. Uh, and, uh, and that's gaining a lot of popularity in, in definitely in California. And so, uh, and we hope to be supplying them with that both in bulk and for their white label business. That's great. And it seems as though, it looks as though they're doing, they have 14 cannabis licenses, placing products in more than 200 stores statewide and servicing roughly 700,000 total customers throughout the golden states. That's impressive. Yeah, they are, they're what you call a single state operator. They're okay. purely focused on California. So they're the first SSO I've met with. Um, and they're really, really good. I mean, they use uh, this really cool hub and spoke model and they partner with Ease. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with them. They're the largest sort of online platform where you order on your phone and you get deliveries in oh, the wow. state of California. And so they're partnering with them and they're just a very, very professional button down, um, high end, uh, management team as my phone starts ringing. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're definitely, um, they're definitely top class. So where do you guys go from here? Now that you guys are working with Kaliva, what's next? Anything new? Well, we want to, I want to, you know, we want to work with other large dispensary chains. As you know, we work really closely with Falcon. Um, you know, which is being acquired by Harvest, but where they're one of the biggest players in the state. We also work, um, you know, really closely with Iconic Farms, um, you know, which is part of, and Blunt Brothers, which is, you know, an award-winning, um, you know, they're award-winning growers. Uh, and, uh, you know, so we have some really good partners. And as opposed to trying to go to all 563 dispensaries, uh, and compete with like these billion dollar MSOs, 
what we're trying to do is more white label sort of strategic surgical partnerships. Um, you know, we're strong in Southern California and we're looking to expand our base in Northern California. Caliva is one of the top players there. Um, you know, there are other great companies there. Harborside comes to mind as well, tremendous company. Um, and, you know, we hope to develop relationships with, you know, these sorts of, you know, industry leaders on the dispensary side. You know, one thing I noticed is how undervalued you guys are. I was looking at all the top cannabis related companies in Canada and the United States. And I noticed that you guys, your revenue just came in just under 10 million. It's pretty good. For a quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Considering uh, you guys are priced at 30 cents in Canada and you guys were ahead of IIPR. Right. Which is trading just recently under a hundred dollars. Wow. So it's just interesting to see the disparities, the disparity between these companies, you making more money than a company that is actually trading just recently as high as a hundred dollars. Right. And you guys are trading at 30 cents. This sector is so crazy. I mean, there's really, it's almost impossible to tell what the value of these companies really is. I mean, when you see you guys trading lower, a lot lower than a company that you're making more revenue than, it just goes to show how early in the, in the in infancy stages we are in this sector. Now, IIPR has a very tight float, very right. tight share structure. They're a very good company. They have a lot of potential. So I'm not saying they're not worth wherever they're trading. At last time, I looked like 80 something dollars. But I just found it interesting that you have a company making less revenue than you, but trading like 300 times higher. Sort of where our stock trades. I can't worry about where we trade relative to others. All I can do is keep my head down and keep working. Right. And that's what we tell the team to do. And, you know, and, you know, the stock market will take care of itself. Right. I mean, when I look at your ups and you'll have your downs. Right. I agree with you 100 percent. When I look at all the top revenue generating cannabis companies in Canada and the United States, I find you to be one of the most undervalued because I, I do a very simple metric where I look at the price. I look at the revenue generated. And when you look at all the top revenue generating companies in Canada and the United States, there's only a few that are at your level of revenue, but trading under a dollar, like wow. only a couple. Uh, Tilt is one of them. Right. Uh, Meta is another one. And then right. there's Halo Labs. There's only three I can think of that's actually trading under a dollar, but is generating in the 10 million per quarter revenue or higher range. So it, it leads me to believe that you guys are on the right track and grossly undervalued, underappreciated, and underexposed. And partnerships like this with great companies like Kaliva are only going to enhance the credibility and enhance the visibility that you guys get. So congratulations for this partnership because I think it's a great one with Kaliva. All right. Thanks, Rich. Now, if there's anything else that you want investors to know that you guys are working on, anything else that you want to discuss with investors, what would it be? Well, we're working on a lot of things, but nothing I can disclose now. Um, we're really actively, you know, you know, trying to do stuff, trying to move the dial, um, you know, looking, looking for more transformation, more growth, but at the same time, keeping our heads down and really focusing on the three states we're in, which are, you know, Oregon. California and Nevada. Um, one thing I can say, and it shows by the results, that Oregon is really improving. Um, Oregon is really a sleeper, I think. Um, you know, they've done a good job at cleaning out all the, you know, black market activity. A lot of people have gone into hemp, and Oregon's showing shoots of green <laughs> wow. now. So yeah, so Oregon's actually a, you know, something that you know for us is, you know, we think will be a pleasant surprise and a generator of cash and then in the near to short term. Very good. Very good. Now, President Trump has gone recently out and is on is, is at war with vapes. Right. Are you familiar with what's going on? Oh, yes, definitely. Now you're in America. So you know what's going on over there. And it's it's totally different than here in Canada. Is that going to affect your business at all? Um, you know, it, it hasn't affected our business. But it's a uh, it's really relevant because in Canada, you have Health Canada and Health Canada governs on a federal basis. Yes. Here you have state to state patchwork, right? And inevitably, I think, you know, this, the FDA has to step up and it's not only cannabis vapes, but it's other vapes, right? One thing about us is we've never, ever used anything except for food grade, botanical derived terps, 
um, pure cannabis, and that's it, right? We don't, there's nothing else in anything we do. Um, and 50,000 people use our products every month. Uh, and we do have complaints because our products have shelf life, you know, and we have to put a shelf life in Nevada because there's no preservatives or no additives and it'll separate just like your milk will, you know? And if you put your cannabis cartridge on the top of your, you know, dashboard in the middle of the summer, it's going to separate. If you put it in the freezer, it's going to, it's going to go bad, right? And there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, it's a natural product, um, you know, and I always joke and say that it's uh, more pure than a pear, an organic pear you eat or something like that because of the parts per billion you got to test for in pesticides in California. So, you know, it's, um, you know, it's, it's something, you know, that people should really think about and calls for, you know, a, a national framework would be, would be really good. Yeah, it uh, seems as though we were having a nice big resurrection in September. And then uh, last week, Trump comes out with the war on vapes. And I feel like it's really kind of slowed down that resurrection now. We're kind of down again. So hopefully we can get some type of a catalyst that can turn this, this sector around. And uh, we can see things, you know, back to where we think that they should be. Um, Halo Labs, in my opinion, is very undervalued, very underappreciated, very underexposed. And that's why we want to bring it to our community. So thank you for all the hard work and effort you guys are putting in to get your story out there and to continue to do good business. I congratulate you on all your success so far. And we look forward to watching you guys grow and mature and continue to move forward in, if, in your future endeavors. And, and thanks for having me. It's our pleasure.